Welcome to our last lesson of chapter two, which was looking at limits. And now we are applying those to tangents and today to velocity. So velocity, uh, if you've done some physics, you will probably be fairly comfortable with this topic already. But basically velocity is a rate of change in distance versus time. So our function is usually going to be written as f of t or sometimes s of t. And this will describe the motion of an object. And this is called the position function. So where is the position, position of an object at a given time? Our average velocity of an object would be over time, you'd take the total change in distance for the displacement divided by the total change in time. And this would give us our average velocity. Okay, so think of this in terms of tangents and secants, we think of our original point P and our second point would be our point Q. Our point P is going to be at time one. Our point Q is going to be at time two. Therefore, point P would be at F of T1. Point Q would be at F of T2. And our average velocity from point P to Q would be, again, the change in displacement or the change in distance over the change in time. Or, in other words, the slope of that line. So your velocity is distance over time. It's going to be the slope of that line, that red line PQ. If we want to compute average velocities over a shorter and shorter time interval, in other words, if we think of T2 being T1 plus H, if H, which is the distance between these two times, approaches zero, the distance between the two times gets shorter and shorter, we would get very close to estimating an instantaneous velocity at point P. Your instantaneous velocity we call V of T, and we use equation two from yesterday. So we have the limit as h approaches zero. Instead of having f of x plus h, we have, or f of a plus h, we have f of t plus h because we're at time t minus f of t all over h. So the limit as q approaches p is our instantaneous velocity. Our average velocity is the slope of that red secant line pq. You need to know the average velocity formula and you need to know the instantaneous velocity equation. This is why I suggested using equation two from yesterday because the only difference here is that you're using an A instead of a T, okay? So let's try. We've got the displacement in kilometers of a particle moving in a straight line is given by F of T is equal to three T squared plus T where T is time in hours, okay? So we've got kilometers and hours as our unit. Determine the average velocity over the interval one to three. So our average velocity is going to be equal to f of t2 minus f of t1 over t2 minus t1. f of t2, we need to figure out. This is going to be f of three, which would be three times three squared plus three or three times nine, which is 27 plus three, or 30. F of T1 is F of one, which is going to be three plus one, or four. So F of T2, 30, minus F of T1, four, over T2, three, minus T1 is one. This gives us 26 over two, or that our average velocity is 13 kilometers per hour. Our instantaneous velocity at t equals 4, v of t is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of t plus h minus f of t all over h. Now you have a choice here. We know that t is 4. We can plug in 4 right away and proceed. Or you can do this all with t's and h's and plug the 4 in at the end. Which one you do, you should really look at what the question's asking and how many parts to the question there are. 
if this one said determine the velocity at t is four and we plug four right away in here, this is just fine. There was a part C that said determine the velocity at t equals 10. I don't want to plug four in at the beginning. I want an expression for V of t so I can plug multiple t values in. So just make sure you're looking at the question and you don't want to have to go through all this work multiple times. If you're going to be given multiple t values, find an expression for V of t and plug that number in at the end. Okay. We don't have any more parts. It's going on to a new example next. So we can plug t in right now. So I'm looking for V of 4. This is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 all over h. Okay. We need to know what f of 4 is here. F of four, okay, if I wanna find F of four, F of four is going to be three times four squared plus four, which gives me three times 16, it's 48, plus four, which gives me 52, okay? F of four plus H is going to be three times four plus H squared plus four plus H, that's F of four plus H. Okay, I'll put this in square brackets so that you can see that that's what that is. Minus F of four, which is 52. All over H. Okay, well, we didn't put enough space here, but then we're gonna have the limit as H approaches zero. We've got three, this is gonna be 16 plus eight H plus H squared plus four plus H minus 52 all over H. So we get three times 16, which is 48, plus three times eight, that gives us 24 H plus three H squared, plus four plus H minus 52 all over H. So this 48, 4, and 52, 48 plus 4 gives me 52 minus 52. Those all cancel. And then I can actually add this H with the 24 H here. So I'm going to have 25 H plus 3 H squared all over H. Now there's an H in every term, so we can cancel out an H. We get 25 plus 3 H. Now, if I direct substitute, I get 25 plus zero. So V of four is equal to 25 kilometers per hour. Now I showed every single little teeny tiny step here. You likely would be able to combine some of these steps together and make it a little bit more uh, succinct and straightforward. Okay. Try another one. Height in meters of a projectile shot from the earth at 10 meters per second after t seconds is given by this equation. So this is our height. Okay. If I want instantaneous velocity at t equals a, this tells me I'm finding an expression for v of t so that I can plug in any number for t. Okay. If I do that, I know that v of t is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of t plus h minus f of t all over h. So v of a, any value t, it really doesn't matter, you're switching one letter for another. Basically what I need to do is I need to figure out what's my function and what is that if I plug in a t plus h or an a plus h, okay? This is gonna be the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h, F of A plus H is going to be negative 4.9. A plus H squared plus 10 times A plus H. Okay. Minus F of A. F of A is going to be negative 4.9 A squared plus 10 A. All over H. Okay. So this here is F of A plus H. This here is f of a, and this here, h, is technically our f of t. Okay, now we expand and simplify. So this is where it gets just a, a bit tedious and messy. It's, it shouldn't be hard. This is just algebra. 
We're not doing any calculus from here on. We're just doing a bunch of algebra. The calculus is figuring out what the limit expression is and plugging the H in at the end. In between, it's all just algebra. We're not doing anything fancy here. So I've got negative 4.9. A plus H squared gives me A squared plus 2AH plus H squared. Then I have plus 10A plus 10H if I expand that bracket. If I expand the negative into the second set of brackets, I get plus 4.9A squared minus 10A all over h. Now I've got a 10a and a 10a that can cancel out immediately here. I need to expand that first set of brackets to get negative 4.9a squared minus 9.8ah minus 4.9h squared plus 10h plus 4.9a squared all over h. Again I've got a 4.9a squared terms that can cancel out with each other. So now I have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 9.8 ah minus 4.9 h squared plus 10 h all over h. There's an h in every term, so this bottom h is going to cancel out with an h in every term here. This gives me the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 9.8 a minus 4.9 h plus 10. Now I can direct substitute my h is 0 in. If I do that, I get negative 9.8a minus 0. This term is going to become 0 here, plus 10. And this is in uh, meters per second. So what this means is that for any e that I have, which I've switched to A, I can plug that in here and figure out what the velocity would be at that exact instant. So that's what we're going to be doing for the next part. It's asking me to determine the velocity when the projectile hits the ground. So I first need to know at what time does this happen? Well, I know the projectile hits the ground when the height is zero, right? So I need to figure out when that's happening. So I know that h of t is equal to negative 4.9t squared plus 10t. I need to figure out when is this 0. So 0 is negative 4.9t squared plus 10t. So I can factor out a t here. And I get negative 4.9t plus 10. So this means that t is either equal to 0 from the first factor. or t is equal to 10 over 4.9 from this second factor, okay? t equals 0 is when we would have launched the projectile, so that's not when it's hitting the ground. It's hitting the ground at that second amount of time. So then we can use this to find our velocity. We know that v of any time a is equal to negative 9.8a plus 10. So I'm finding V of 10 over 4.9, which gives me negative 9.8 times 10 over 4.9 plus 10. Now, this is nice and neat for us. 4.9 and 9.8 have a common factor. So I end up, and you can use this, do this on a calculator, you'll get the same answer. You end up with negative 20 plus 10, which gives you negative 10 meters per second. When the projectile hits the ground. Now this should make sense because the projectile will be falling, which is where your negative, um, your negative velocity comes from because it's falling down. Okay, the distance between the projectile and the ground is decreasing at that point. Okay. And that's all for today.